Now, we wasn't completely pleased with our presentation um, of the comparison based on uh, what uh, one of our subscribers, um, I knock, uh I knock music was describing and making a comparison of the autobiography of his Imperial Majesty with the Book of Jubilees and Edward Ullendorf's observation. So he wasn't completely satisfied with um, what we had said um, concerning the unique role of the Messiah, or what ones would call Christ, and some of the the researchers and scholars comparisons and critique of this Ethiopic book known as the Book of Jubilees. Now this is also called, it says, Or Little Genesis, and here's a translation um, the editor's Ethiopic text, and this is uh, the R.H. Uh, Charles D.D. Now, what we want to do is touch on a couple of pages here, a couple of key pages, and share with you all what we had in mind, but don't feel like we properly articulated those ideas concerning how the role of the Messiah within the Ethiopic Book of Jubilees or Kufale, Metzafe Kufale and Metzafe Henok, it does not differ from what the Bible says, but it differs from what uh, modern Christianity, which has interpreted um, this whole eschatological end times that many Christians, and we would say whitewashed Christians, and those who are only familiar with the uh, recessions from the European versions and translations of the Bible, like the King James Version of the Bible and the white European preachers, their preaching of the end times and Christology and eschatology. And this is one of the reasons why when we say that his imperial majesty, Kedemawe Hala Selassie, is Christ in his kingdom character, we believe this is one of the reasons why it's not properly understood. So we're just going to go through a couple of um, sections here and try to make the point that we don't think we made a full point in the other video where we touched on the comment from Inoch Music and the comparison of His Majesty's autobiography, the use of the singular and plural suffixes, that according to Edward Ullendorf's um, scholastic observation, he found somewhat disturbing. You understand the use of the singular and the plural in His Imperial Majesty's autobiography. But here in the Book of Jubilees, the R.H. Charles version, this is page LXXVII or 87, page 87, and here's a note, note 24, and it says, Views of the author on the Messiah. The messianic part of this is taken out of kingdom. It should be kingdom here. The priesthood of Melchizedek, or Melchizedek, the law, or Torah, circumcision, and the Sabbath, the future life, and the Jewish, or we're going to annotate or correct this right here, the Hebrew and later Judaic or Jewish calendar. Now here, according to the authors and translators' um, um, notes before the translation, he says that the Messiah, according to the book of Jubilees or Little Genesis, he says, although our author is an upholder of the Maccabean dynasty. Now, the Europeans, because they don't want to really acknowledge that the Ethiopic documents could possibly be older and more original than what they have. And some of the scholars are like this, not all of the scholars. Some of them quite freely admit that there is an ancient to the Ethiopic documents that predates the majority of what the Europeans and the Romanists have, such as um, August Dillman and Joe Macy and there's and there's and there's a few others. But here he says that although our author R. H. Charles says our author, the author of the uh, Metafe Kufale or the book of uh, Jubilees Little Genesis, is an upholder of the Maccabean dynasty. They like to late date the Ethiopian documents and say, Well, it's from the time of Maccabees, not from the time of Moses as it is at it as it is written according to the text. He still clings like the writer of Ethiopic Enoch in um, 83, chapter 83 to chapter uh, 90, 
to the hope of a Messiah or Christ, a Messiah sprung from Judah. He makes, however, only one reference to this Messiah, and no role of any importance is assigned to him. And then he gives a reference right here. See um, uh, XXXI 31 and 18 note. The messianic expectation showed no vigorous life throughout this century till it was identified with the Maccabean family. If we are right in regarding the messianic kingdom as of a temporary duration. Now, this was particularly key and interesting. This is why some say that his imperial majesty could not be Christ in his kingly character because according to what they have been told, that according to Protestant and Protestant revision of Romanist documents, they've been told that the messianic kingdom is either forever and ever or a thousand years or as much longer than, for for example, um, his imperial majesty's reign, they would say. But there's something very interesting in this book that actually shows that there is a messianic kingdom, which is of a temporary duration, but then there's a bigger picture that without study of such documents it's impossible to see. And therefore we only like seeing partially out of one eye, maybe blindly out of one eye, when we just rely on the, on you know, like the just the European um, version of end times, which basically doesn't include black people except like on Star Trek, you know, he's like Jordy, you know, except he's blind, you know. Anyway, if we are right in regarding the messianic kingdom as of temporary duration, this is the first instance in which the Messiah is associated with a temporary messianic kingdom. So he's saying that this area in the book of Jubilees is the first instance in which the Messiah is associated with a temporary messianic kingdom. Now, one thing interesting about the book of Enoch, and we're not there just yet, but in the book of Enoch, it speaks about the Son of Man. It speaks about the Son of Man being distinct from the Ancient of Days. And then it also speaks about the Son of a Woman, the Son of Woman. And some have tried to say, well, all this must be Christ Jesus Yeshua 2,000 years ago. But a more careful study of it would, would, would indicate that each of these phrases, the Son of Man, is specifically referring to one person or personality. And the Son of a Woman or the Son of Woman is referring to another personality. And the Ancient of Days you understand, is also linked more closely with the Son of Man than with the Son of, of Woman. And in one of the, the documents that we have seen, um, one particular writer, we forget who, who was studying it, basically said that it appeared to them that the Son of Man would, or the Son of Woman would clearly not indicate, at least the character described in Enoch and even somewhat in Jubilee, would, would not be Jesus Christ in the sense of the Jesus Christ that one know 2,000 years ago, but he would fulfill the personality of the son of woman. But the son of man seems to be closely associated with the one called the Ancient of Days. And it's at this point that we say, behold, Christ in his kingly character. According to the Ethiopic um, documents, which were hidden for nearly 2,000 years from Western um, Christendom or from white European Christendom, Anyway, the Messianic Kingdom, in the notes on 129 and XXII or 23 and 30, I have dealt at some length with the character of this kingdom. We have there seen that it was to be brought about gradually. Now, this is also a very important note here to this word gradually, because this is associated with his imperial majesty's policy, which allowed the careless Ethiopians um, broke the yoke because they did not want things to come about gradually. They saw what the West had and what was going on in the West and, and, and probably um, it being seduced by the so-called West then lifestyle and forgetting who they are, what their purpose was, that careless generation. They wanted to speed things up. But this word gradually is a key word that should be noted concerning his imperial majesty and concerning the messianic, the true messianic kingdom. So it says, we have there seen that it was to be brought about gradually by the progressive, 
spiritual development of man. This is also the key in the teachings of his imperial majesty. By the progressive spiritual development of man and a corresponding, it says, transformation of nature. Of nature. Its members were to attain to the full limit of 1,000 years in happiness and peace. Now, all of this, when properly studied, can be found in the Bible. It's what the Bible actually is, is the New Testament especially, and the prophets and the apostles and the good news, is pointing to. But counterfeit Christianity or Caesar's Christ, uh, Cesare Borgia, the whitewashed Jesus, and everything that comes with that lie, because they lie about the obvious, how be it they won't lie about what's not so obvious, especially if you're not a scripture Bible studier. So the spiritual development, progressive spiritual development, this is what Christ taught, this is what Paul taught, the apostles taught, that spiritual development, what the King of Kings teach of man. And also Paul talks about a corresponding transformation of nature, how the whole nat nature and creatures wait for the manifestation of the sons of God. So this corresponding corresponds as man progressively spiritually develops, make his will obedient to good influences and avoid evil. It also has an effect on the transformation of nature. Its members were to attain to the full limit of 1,000 years in happiness and peace. During its continuance, the powers of evil were to be restrained. So in the continuance of this process of spiritual development and the corresponding transformation of nature, that in the continuance, the powers of evil, of the Aganent or the Jin, the John, were to be restrained, 23 and not, uh, 20 XXII, 23 and 29. The last judgment was apparently to take place at its close. See note on 23 and 30. On the probable uh, derivation of this view from Mazdaism, see note on 1 and 29. Now, just a little bit more of this. It says that the writer of Jubilees, or Metzafi Kufali, the Ethiopic book of Jubilees, or Little Genesis, we can hardly doubt, though, that the era of the Messianic kingdom had already set in. Such an expectation was often cherished in the prosperous days of the Maccabees. Thus, it was entertained by the writer of Ethiopic Enoch in LXXXIII or 83 to XC or 90, 83 to chapter 90. In the days of Judas, Judas Maccabeus, before 161 BC, whether Jonathan was looked upon as the divine agent. Let's go further. This is some from, from the writer's opinion, the translator's opinion. Um, divine agent introducing the kingdom, we cannot say. Because, because the Europeans don't want to think that they're still speaking about things to come forward. They're trying to make it seem as though the Book of Jubilees was written during the Maccabean period about that particular period of time. Instead, it is speaking of things to come and things that we in Rastafari Revelation this present day and time have witnessed some of the beginning aspects of. This is why he says they cannot, you know, they cannot say. But as to Simon being regarded in this light, there's no doubt. Indeed, his contemporaries come to regard him as the Messiah himself, Simon Maccabeus, as we see from Psalm um, XC or Psalm 110. It's interesting, Psalm 110 is the very psalm that his imperial majesty chanted on his uh, coronation day. Or the noble messianic hymn in the testament of Levi 18. The tame effusion in 1 Maccabees XIV or 14, 8 to 15 is a relic of such literature which was emasculated by its uh, Sadducean editor. The Sadducean editor, remember Christ had spoke to the Sadducees when they asked those funny questions, and he said, you do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. Now, Simon was succeeded by John Heraconus, and John Heraconus is somebody that was also featured in a lot of Ethiopic 
church writings and literature, they make reference to this particular John in 135 B.C. And this great prince seemed to his countrymen to realize the expectation of the past, for according to a contemporary writer, he embraced in his own person the triple office, remember the triple crown right here of the king of kings, the triple office of prophet, priest, and civil ruler, a type of king. While, according to the testament of Reuben, he was to, quote, die on behalf of Israel in wars seen and unseen. In both these passages, he seems to be accorded the messianic office, but not so in our author, but not according to, in other words, not according to the book of Jubilees, as we have seen above. Uh, Herac, um, um, Hyrcanus, shall I say, John Hyrcanus, is only to introduce the messianic kingdom over which the Messiah sprung from, Judah is to rule. Now it goes on in the next section to basically talk about the um the priesthood of um of Maccabees, which is very interesting, but we're gonna take a pause for the cause and then we're gonna pick up on two more reference areas to the view of the Messiah and the Messianic kingdom in the Ethiopic book of Jubilee. So stay tuned for that.